Black Panther was a cinematic sensation when it opened about a year ago, garnering the kind of critical praise that I can best describe as bordering on hysterical, lighting a cultural powder keg that had been brewing for decades and ultimately going on to make over $1.3 billion worldwide. Billion. Let that sink in for a second. It's pretty ironic when you consider that it's a thoroughly mediocre comic book origin story with a simplistic plot riddled with holes and convenience, dull as dishwater characters, questionable special effects and motivations that often make no sense. The basic story is this. T'Challa is now the leader of Wakanda now that his dad got killed in Civil War. Even though he was a total badass in that movie and proved he was worthy of the mantle of Black Panther, his worry here is that he's not bad enough to take on the mantle of Black Panther. Yeah, this movie seems to treat character progression as if it's more of a circle than a straight line. Anyway, he's on his way back to Wakanda to be crowned king. Wakanda looks like a poor tribalistic country in the middle of nowhere, but it's all just a big act. The city of Wakanda is actually a super advanced technological utopia protected by a magical bullshit shield that somehow hides it from the outside world. Wait, what? They have spaceships, anti-gravity trains, nanomachines, laser guns, and shoes that let you sneak around without making any noise. Sneakers, if you will. Sneakers. <laughs> Comedy gold. It's all possible because of vibranium, a magical bullshit material that allows you to do anything the writers need you to do. It powers all their technology, it makes up the Black Panther suit and the magical ball things that he uses to do anything the writers need him to do. Whether it's killing vehicle engines, paralyzing enemies or stabilizing major spinal injuries. Wait, what the fuck? T'Challa starts off by rescuing his ex-girlfriend Nakia and a bunch of female prisoners for some kind of militant group. She's on an undercover mission to do something, but Black Panther blows her cover by saving her so she's mad at him, and then they move on. So they get back to the capital city where T'Challa meets up with Shuri, his 15-year-old sister. Shuri is responsible for overseeing all of Wakanda's technological development. Like, everything. It'd be like if Elon Musk was in charge of all US infrastructure, military development, the space program, Facebook and Family Guy. And he was 15 years old. What the fuck am I watching? So when he became Black Panther in Civil War, T'Challa took some magical bullshit herb that made him super strong and fast and stuff. But to become king, he has to win a fair fight against any challengers, so he takes a different magical bullshit herb to make his powers go away. Because that's how herbs and drugs work, right? Like, they're permanent? Like, if you smoked a joint, you'd just be permanently stoned until you took something else to sober you up. Anyway, he wins his fight and he gets crowned king. whoop de doo He takes the magical bullshit herb again to get his powers back. Wow, that was a lot of wheel spinning right there. What the actual fucking Christ is this place? So it's a super advanced technological utopia that decides its leaders based on who can punch the hardest? Really? This is the best thing you could come up with. So we flash over to London, where Adonis Creed is fucking around in some old museum somewhere. He throws a few insults at the nice polite tour guide because we need to be reminded about colonialism or something, I guess. Oh, and he's got Gollum with him, and they kill everyone and then they steal some artifact thing. So T'Challa finds out that Gollum is planning to sell the artifact to Bilbo Baggins in South Korea, because that's a really convenient meeting place when one person's in London and the other's in North America. So T'Challa and Michonne go there to fight a bunch of people and they capture Gollum, but then Creed shows up and he rescues Gollum and he injures Bilbo in the crossfire. So T'Challa shoves his magical balls into Bilbo and they take him to Wakanda to heal him. And Shuri does it because she can also do complex spinal surgery, apparently. Because, yeah, why not, right? So a bunch of people give T'Challa some shit because he failed in his mission and T'Challa worries that he's not badass enough to be Black Panther. Again. Circles, remember? Then Creed murders Gollum and he brings his body to Wakanda so he can get an audience with T'Challa. Here he explains that he's the son of T'Challa's uncle or something and challenges him to ritual combat, even though T'Challa's now been crowned king so he doesn't have to do it. But because the plot needs it to happen, he goes along with it anyway. He takes the magical bullshit herb to remove his powers again and he promptly gets his ass kicked. He falls over a waterfall and he gets drowned. Creed takes over as king, takes the magical bullshit herb to make himself even stronger and everyone just kind of goes along with it because the plot needs it to happen. So T'Challa's family run away to the mountains where T'Challa apparently washed up. Because rivers flow uphill, don't you know? PHYSICS! He's on ice. I mean, literally, he's on a big block of ice, which apparently stops you dying instead of giving you hypothermia and, you know, killing you. I don't fucking know anymore. So they give T'Challa the last of the magical bullshit herb and it brings him back to life, and he plans to go back to Wakanda to kick Creed's ass and become king again. This is never gonna end, is it? 
Meanwhile, Creed is mad because black people are oppressed everywhere, so he's planning to ship Wakanda weapons to them so they can start revolutions all over the world and take over. Christ, I don't know where to start with this one. The world has already seen off threats like alien invasions, interdimensional portals, and literal gods. And you really think a bunch of gangbangers with laser guns is going to overthrow all of the world's military and take on the Avengers? So T'Challa shows up and he starts his insurrection, and everyone's fighting because their loyalties are kind of split between the two men. Creed orders the magical spaceships to start delivering the laser guns to the gangbangers, and Bilbo goes after them with a radio-controlled magic spaceship. Everyone has a big battle, and some asshole orders really bad CGI rhinos to charge on and fuck everything up. What the fuck is happening? T'Challa gets his hands on a spare Black Panther suit, and Creed puts on another suit, so you've basically got two Black Panthers who look almost identical fighting each other. Except they can't actually hurt each other because their suits are made of magical bullshit metal that absorbs all impacts. The only thing they can really fight on is a magical train track, which disrupts their suits and allows T'Challa to get the upper hand, and he stabs Creed in the heart. But Creed doesn't die yet because he has more bullshit to say, so they go for a walk and they watch the sunset and then Creed says more anti-colonial stuff and then he dies. The movie ends with Wakanda opening itself up to the world and T'Challa's all happy because he's opened up a community centre in Oakland. It's okay, we won't talk about all the African countries right next to Wakanda that are literally dying from famine, disease and war. That community centre will make all the difference. And that's it, that's literally the movie's plot. There are so many things wrong with this movie that I could spend about an hour breaking them all down, but fundamentally I think it comes down to wanting to have your cake and eat it. The writers wanted Wakanda to be a super advanced technological utopia, but they tried to mesh this with traditional African tribal culture, and the two things go together about as well as chili sauce and black forest gato. They needed to explain how it stayed hidden for all this time, so they invented a magical bullshit shield, but how does that explain how it stayed hidden for the past few thousand years before the shield even existed? They wanted T'Challa to go on the hero's journey, but he'd already been on it in Civil War, so they just kind of did it again and hoped we wouldn't notice. They wanted a finale that placed the world in jeopardy, but it was totally contrived and unrealistic because the actual military capabilities of Wakanda were not up to the task at all. They kept writing themselves into corners because they were useless fucking hacks, so they used the magical bullshit vibranium stuff to get themselves out of it. And lastly, they wanted to make an important statement about black identity and the conflict between American reality and African heritage, but they don't really seem to know what they want to say about it. Wakanda's just a magically simplistic, idealised solution to far more complex issues, and I really don't think a superhero movie is the kind of platform to try to deal with themes like this. And yet, here we are. You know, when I think about the obscene amount of praise that got heaped on this movie, I'm reminded of the Soviet Union when Stalin would go to make a speech about something and everyone would stand up to applaud him. But nobody wanted to be the one to stop clapping first because that might mean you weren't as loyal as everyone else. So it just went on for like five minutes straight until Stalin himself got pissed off and had to tell him to stop. That feels a bit like what we're living through right now. Progressive politics is the Joseph Stalin of our times, and everyone's so terrified of attracting its anger that they just kind of go along with the crowd and keep clapping because it's easier to clap until your hands are red raw than be the one who dares to sit down first. And that concludes my video for today. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider hitting like and subscribe, and feel free to share your comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, and have a great day.